doesn't show up to his own trial. questions 
I mean, really, are you here the next three days is the most important question. Um, and if you are up here, you are allowed to bring, um, in Michigan now, jurors can take notes. So if that's something that you want to do, you can even just write on the back of your jury instructions. Um, just to maybe keep track of witnesses and what they say. Um, there's about 15 witnesses that you're going to hear from, so that's kind of a lot. Okay? Um, all right, I'm going to read the fact, um, the police report from the case, uh, just because that you need to hear it before you may answer a couple jury questions. Okay? Um, so, uh, a teenager is found dead in her apartment, and the person charged with the crime is a young man who lived across the hall from her in the same building. So, the question you're going to be looking at is this man guilty of murder? Um, the facts in this case indicate that in the morning of Monday, December 4th, 2017, um, the parents of an 18-year-old girl, Mr. and Mrs. Lewinhagen, contacted the Oakland County Sheriff's Department uh, via the phone to report that their daughter, Candy, was missing. She was scheduled to go to her parents' house on Saturday, December 2nd, but never showed up. She then failed to show up for work on Monday, December 4th. So her boss called her parents because that was unlike Candy to actually miss work. Um, her parents then called um, the sheriff's department and deputies went to Ms. Lillian Hagen's apartment and found her bloody body on the living room floor. The apparent murder weapon was a bloody hammer, was found lying next to the body. The medical examiner's report indicates that she was killed Friday evening, December 1st, 2017. After an intensive investigation and gathering of information on possible suspect, suspects, police arrested a 21-year-old man named Jacob Latner for the murder of Candy Lillian Hagen. Okay, so that's our basic fact pattern. Um, so with that, I'm going to have my clerk draw the numbers, and then I'll call them out. Um, again, if your number's called, just come up. We're going to fill the back row first, okay, and then we'll fill the front row. Um, and then I'm going to question those first 14 prospective jurors, okay? I'm good? All right. Juror 26. Quiet, please. Juror number two. Juror number 22. We have a juror 19. It is Alexis. Uh, number one. 
tell this one first. Juror number 20. Juror number 16. Juror number 21. Juror number 29. Okay. Well, actually, it goes out. Okay. Um, to the jury, or prospective jury, I guess I should say. Um, other than my clerk and bailiff coming to your class, have any of you heard about this case? Um, do any of you know that you'll be, for sure, that you'll be absent Tuesday or Wednesday? Okay, we might wrap up tomorrow, but Wednesday is kind of our extra if needed day. Um, do any of you have a close relationship, friendship with any person involved in the case that would prevent you from being a fair and impartial juror? Any of the lawyers, friends with them outside the class? Okay. Um, is there anybody on the jury that cannot be make and be make a serious and fair decision in this case? All right. Normally that would take like 45 minutes, but we did it in two, so that's good. Um, all right. So you are our jury. Um, I'm satisfied. Any objections, prosecution to the jury? Yes, they don't. Any objections? No. Okay. Um, so. Um, what we're, what's going to happen now to open the case is you're going to hear opening statements. I'm going to give you a few jury instructions, um, and then uh, our prosecution will start. Okay. Um, just in terms of, actually, I'm going to now have you raise your stand up and raise your right hand, please. Yeah. Stand up. Raise your right hand. Okay. And we're just going to take an oath, basically, that instructs about that you won't talk about this outside of the court, all that thing. So, do you solemnly swear or affirm in the, case, in the penalty, in the case of the penalty, um, that you will be fair and impartial and not discuss this case outside of the class until instructed to do so? If so, please say, I do. I do. I do. All right, you may be seated. All right. Um, so now that you've taken an oath as a juror, okay, it is your duty not to converse with or permit any other person to address you on the subject of the trial until the conclusion of the trial. Um, any communication by the juror to any person, including friends, family, with respect to the case, is an act of contempt and may be punished by a fine or imprisonment. It is also your duty not to form or express an opinion until the case has finally been submitted to you for your verdict. That includes talking amongst each other. So um, when we are in recess, which will basically be the rest of today, going into tomorrow, um, you're not to discuss the case even with your fellow jury, okay? Um, as previously emphasized, a case must be solely decided on the evidence received in the courtroom. Um, the opening statements you're about to hear are just exactly that, opening statements. Any opening and closing statements by the attorneys are not to be considered evidence, um, only Testimony that comes in through perspective, through witnesses is evidence. Okay? Um, a wise policy for you to follow is to avoid, again, even the appearance of an improper discussion. Lawyers understand this rule, and you will find, even at the risk of seeming unfriendly, even lawyers will avoid, avoid a casual conversation with you. Um, so my, my clerk and bailiff went over your basic instructions. Are there any questions before we get started? All right, with that, prosecution, are you ready with your opening statement? Yeah. Okay. 
And again, for everybody's purposes, speak up so we all can hear. The microphones are just for the video recording. They're not necessarily, they're not gonna amplify her voice. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we have come together today to bring justice to Candy Lewenhagen and her family against the defendant of this case, Jacob Lettner. Candy Lewenhagen was a beautiful, kind person who trusted the wrong man. On Friday of December 1st, 2017, at approximately 9 p.m., Candy Lewenhagen was struck with a hammer three times. This led to massive bleeding, severe brain injury, and ultimately her death. The defendant, Jacob Lettner, lived across the hall from Ms. Lewenhagen. The defendant believed to be in love with her. However, he's obsessive, and when he was told by Candy that she was seeing another man, Jacob Lettner killed her, killed her with malicious intent. This act of murder was cold-blooded and cruel. He should be charged with the murder, with murder in the first degree. We will stand to bring, we will bring to the stand policemen at the scene, Angel Cross, the chief of police, Connor Haggerty, Candy's roommate, Emery Stolagros, the upstairs neighbor, Isaac Angel, the eyewitness neighbor, Natalie Luba, pathologist, Nick, Nick Fenwick. State Crime Bureau, Julia Hedden, psychologist, Sydney Scarpelli, the Red Barn bartender, Davin Short, ex-girlfriend, Casey Gallenbrand, the old folks, home employer, uh, Jeff, the mother of the victim, and mother of the victim, Courtney Lewenhagen. Today, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will see and hear compelling evidence for and against the defendant. Please remember to pay attention to the facts. Some of those facts, are that the defendant's fingerprints were found on the hammer. The defendant tried to create an alibi so that he did not appear guilty of the murder of Candy Lewenhagen. Jacob Latner lied to the police about having any sort of relationship with Candy Lewenhagen. You will hear from many witnesses and experts testifying for and against Jacob Latner. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is your duty to consider the following. Was there evidence that the crime committed was premeditated and deliberate? Was there an intent to kill? And did the defendant believe he had a reason to kill Candy Lewenhagen? In the defense's testimonies, you may hear that the defendant, Jacob Lettner, seemed to be a kind, involved, selfless man. However, it is not, to, it is not so difficult to, to fool the casual observer. We ask the jury to listen carefully to all the facts with an unbiased and fair mindset. All of us are here today to pursue justice for Candy Lewenhagen and her family. Thank you. Defense, are you ready with your opening? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, on December 1st, 2018, our client, J Jacob Latner, went and picked up Candy Kane at 4.30 from her old folks home where she worked. On the ride home, he was hoping for a fun night with Candy Kane, but instead she told him that she had plans with another guy. So. Being an understanding person, he dropped her off and didn't see her for the rest of the night. Mr. Latner went home, he ate supper, and he took a good nap. He woke up around 9 o'clock, he got his things ready, put his laundry in his room, and he left for the night going to a bar. He came home later from the bar, not to see that anything was wrong, but to grab some items and leave for his parents' house. See, Mr. Latner was a kind, hearted, he was so good of a person, the community around him acknowledged this. And the fact that he murdered Candy Kane is not guilty. See, the inconsistency of evidence for this trial is the main factor. Pay attention to how the evidence does not add up. Our client is not guilty. Okay, thank you. All right, so we're going to start first with direct examination with prosecution's witnesses. Um, so prosecution, are you, oh, actually, before I do that, all witnesses, can you please follow the bailiff out to the back hall 
and the bailiff will bring you in and it's your time to testify. at the scene, Angel Cross. Okay, bail Angel Cross, please. Only swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth. If so, say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Angel Cross, A N G E L C R O S S. Okay, you may be seated. And again, just make sure you keep your voice up so that everybody can hear. Okay. Go ahead. Good morning. Um, I would. I want to have some questions for you. Can you tell the jury your name again, please? Angel Cross. How many years of experience do you have being the police? 11 years. What were you told to do by the Chief of Police on December 4th, 2017? I was told to, to conduct a preliminary investigation on the disappearance of Candy Kane. Where did you go on December 4th, 2017? I went to the apartment house at 1012 Hamilton Street. What did you do upon your arrival at the scene? I conducted a search of the premises and interviewed several neighbors. Who did one of the, uh, one of the neighbors report seeing? The male tenant. What was he driving? A 2005 Ford pickup truck. Who was this man seen with and at the, what time of the day, December 1st, 2017? He was seen with candy cane sometime after 5 o'clock. What did one resident find in the laundry room? They found bloody towels and the victim's clothing in the washer of the laundry room. What did you do with the evidence? I submitted it as evidence to the case. Was the door locked to the victim's apartment? No, it was not. Did anyone open the door when you knocked? No. Was there some type of struggles or disturbance has taken place? Yes, there was. What did you see in the apartment? I saw the victim's body on the f in the in the living area on the floor, and a purse on the table. What was the most important thing that you found? Um, the victim's body. Was robbery a suspected motive? No, it was not. Why it wasn't a suspected motive? There was nothing missing from the environment. Was there a murder weapon? Yes, there was. Can you tell me what it is? A uh, hammer. So I want you to take a look at this hammer right here. Is that the hammer that you found on the scene? Yes, it was. Thank you. Um, did you call the chief of police after entering the apartment? Yes, sir. What did he do after the arrival? He um, conducted a search of the apartment with me. What did you do after the chief came to the apartment? We worked together and confirmed my suspicion. Um, where was the roommate of the victim? She was missing. Were there any documents issued? Yes, I sent out two APBs. So what were the purposes of the APB? To find 
uh, the male tenant and the roommate. Did you speak to the victim roommate on December 4th, 2017? Yes, sir. Who took over the case after that? The State Crime Bureau. Thank you. I have no more questions. Okay. Defense cross-examination. And remember, too, that you can redirect and recross until there's no more questions. Okay. Cross-examination. Mrs. Cross, you claimed that you found bloody towels in Mr. Latner's clothes. Is this true? No, in the laundry room. In with his clothes? The victim's clothes. Ah, okay. So you walked into the apartment. Can you state what you saw again? I saw the body laying on the floor. Oh, right Where was the blood splattered? On the walls. Everywhere? Yes. All around. Okay. So you said the bureau that conducted the rest? Yes. Okay. So with the laundry, you claim that you found well, a resident found several red stains all over towels in the laundry of the defendant. Okay. Was there any blood on the stain, like on the actual clothes themselves? No, there was not. So they're claiming that a hammer was used of the defendants to murder Mrs. Lewin Hagen. So you said there's blood everywhere, all around. Were there any clothes in that laundry that had blood stains on them? No. That's all. Any redirection? I have one. Yeah. Do I have to stay there? You do. You found a hammer at the scene? Correct. What was on the hammer that was later confirmed? Blood. What else was on the hammer that was later confirmed? Uh, the fingerprints of the defendants. Thank you. Any recross? Confirmed that the fingerprints on the hammer was of the defendants, correct? Correct. So the hammer was the defendants, as he did have a job as a mechanic. Yes. In the testimony, it claims that. It claims that the hammer was used for projects at Mrs. Lewin Hagen's house. Okay, any redirection off that? No, nothing further? Okay, thank you for your time. You may step down and you can stay in here. Grab yourself from the back and you Okay. All right, with that prosecution, will you call your next witness? I want to call for the chief of police, Connor Hagadi. Okay. Can you grab Connor, please? swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth. If so, say I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Uh, Connor Haggerty, C-O-N-N-O-R. 
R-H-E-G-A-R-T-Y. Okay, you may be seated. And please just make sure you keep your voice up. The microphones are just for videoing, so proceed. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, can you tell the jury your name again? Uh, I'm Connor Hedges. How long have you been the chief of police? Uh, 15 years. What day and time was the call received? You received the call from the. Uh, I believe it was December 3rd, 10:30 a.m. Okay. What did you order Sergeant Cross to do until you arrived at the scene? I told her to like uh, hold down the scene, just protect all the evidence, make sure there was no shooting at the scene. What did you find at the scene? We found the body of a King Hanging and a bloody hammer. What conclusion did you come after the initial walkthrough at the scene? Uh, this is a hanger had been brutally murdered with that hammer. Who did you ask to take over the investigation? The State Crime Bureau. Who did you investigate on Monday, December 4, 2017? Candy's roommate, uh, Emery Stoudros. Um, what conclusion did you come about Emery Stooling Gross? We were happy with her questioning and that she had no connection to the crime whatsoever. What did you, what did the expert investigators report to you? That there was a lot of blood that had, well, from the, from the scene, there was blood that had seeped not only onto the floor, but through the floor into the basement. Where was the uh, hammer found? What the pathologist report? That Mrs. Luna Hagen had been uh, killed by the three hammer hits to the back of the head and then had lost too much blood to be alive. What facts did you report at the grand jury proceedings? Um, I'm sorry, could you remind me a little bit? Um, what facts did you report at the grand jury proceedings? you remind me of those facts? It's been a little while. Um, so, is... I'm just going to show them a copy of the statement. So okay. He has it in front of so, did the, the missing girls um, identify with the defendant? Yes. Um, what did the defendant admit? That he was with her, but... That he admitted he remained in the building in the entire evening until about 10 p.m. What did uh, you come up? What did your theory about um, compelling physical and material evidence at the department of Candy Luhang Hanging? She was murdered in blood profusely and was beaten by the hammer. Is the weapon the same hammer found in the apartment of the girl with her blood on it? Yes. So what can you find as the laundry the laundry room? A pair of towels found within the laundry room contain uh, blood stains of the deceased. <coughs> what happened to the victim after that? No, um, after the, um, I yeah, mean. Yeah, take one time out. Um, Grant's class is in here, too. A thousand things are passing. Hang on, you guys. Brief time out. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I'm like, okay. Okay. All right, sorry. Proceed, repeat your last question. Um, what have, what, what did you guys do with the body after that? We took it to the medical examiner's office. So, <coughs> what did you guys do with the belongings remaining in the apartment? Um, her personal belongings remained in the apartment, uh, including her purse, her winter coat, and
Um, what did the defendant found is necessary to do? Could you repeat that, please? What did the defendant found find it necessary to do with his camper truck? Yeah, scratch that. We're not gonna. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. So, did the defendant lie to you about it, about if he know the victim or not? Um, he lied about his whereabouts in that evening, but he said he didn't know, and he did lie about his relationship with okay. um, Miss Olivia Hankins. For what reason did the defendant claim to have lied for? I think uh, speculation. Um, it's close. He is an expert witness who can give his opinion. However. Um, in this case, I would stick to what the defendant told you and then versus what you found to be. So be clear that the defendant said this and we found this. That makes sense? Okay. Repeat your question, then I'm going to let him answer it. But Okay. It. For what reason did the defendant claim to have lied for? He claimed that he was nervous and did not want to be implicated into any crime, but then we found a, well, we found that out that he was lying because we found a picture of him. What is your theory about the murder of Candy Luen Hanjin? I believe that the defendant brutally beat her to death while after she had told him that there was not going to be a relationship. He became infatuated, and then when Miss Luen Hagen decided to like break it off, um, the defendant became enraged and lost control. And left the apartment, went to the uh, tavern, and got some drinks nervously to try and to establish an alibi for that evening, which also he did lie about. He lied about his parents, but the bartender identified him not there until after 10.30. Okay. And, um, and then I believe he went home after that. Um. I have no more question for the witness. Okay, defense, cross-examination. So, Mr. Hagerty, mm -hmm. is it true that no other people were called into suspicion for the murder? Only my defendant and her roommate? Yes, that is true. But is it true that my defendant claimed that she had another date with another man that same evening that she was murdered? Why wasn't he looked into? I do not know. So you said that the defendant's clothes were found with the bloody towels, is that correct? Yes, sir. But there was no blood stains on his clothes. On the defendant's clothes? On uh, the defendant's clothes. And there was no blood stains in his apartment either. So, from what I've read, it says you let um, let's see, you let Emily Stillagross, the roommate of the victim, come into the apartment that same day that uh, you found the body. Yes. Yes, to gather her blood. So what you're saying is you let someone come into the crime scene before it was completely shut down. Well, she needed to grab her belongings to get out and get on with the day. So we had to let her in and we escorted her and made sure she did not disturb any of the other evidence. She got her stuff and got out. We told the uh, jury that our defendant lied, but is it also true that our defendant reverted his statement, apologized, and gave you the truth? Yes, sir. That's all. Any redirection? Did Emily Stolgars mention to you that Candy Lewin Hagen had a date of the night of the murder?
can actually get your stuff if you want to come and stay out here and watch. Um, prosecution, call your next witness. I want to call for uh, the roommate, Emory Dillon Gross. Okay, can you grab Emory, please? under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? Yes. If so, say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. I'm Marie Stuligros, which is common. Just yeah. spell your last name. Okay, S-T-U-L-I-G-R-O-S-S. -S. Okay, you may be seated. And again, to speak loud enough that the jury can hear and everybody in the audience. Good morning. Good morning. Um, can you tell the jury your name yeah. again, please? How old are you? 21. Where did you leave and with whom? I'm sorry? Where did you leave? Where did you uh, live? Oh, live. Sorry. I lived um, with Candy in an apartment. Where do you leave now? In live. A, temporary, a temporary apartment. Who live across the hall from you when you and Candy live in 1012 Hamilton Street? Can you repeat that? Who lived across the hall? Who lived across the hall? Yes. Oh, Jacob. Well, I think I'm going to have to find it. What car do you own? Um, a 1978 Ford wagon. And what about Candy? I didn't know what car she owned. When was the last time you saw Candy? Friday evening. What was you and the victim doing that time? We were eating dinner. What did she say about her plan on December 1st, 2017? She said she was going to stay in on Friday night and then go to her parents' house on Saturday morning. After the supper or dinner, I may say, you had with the victim, what did you do? I left to go to my parents' house. Did you return to the apartment after that? I returned on Monday. Did the police allow you to go inside the apartment? Yes. For what purpose, may they I? They allowed me to retrieve my things. What did you see and notice in the apartment? Uh, I saw that Candy's things were still there. Um. And what were the evidence that the police asked you to te testify, identify, I'm sorry? They told me that, or I saw that there were blood-stained towels and that there were pools of blood on the floor. So, so you said that the towels belonged to Candy? Yes. Was there, was there any other things that the police showed you? Did he tell you anything about his suspicion about the case? Yes. What did he say? He said that he believed that Candy was a victim of death. Was there anything that Candy did that you thought may have been strange? So did the defendant show any love interest to the victim? Not that I know of. Were you aware of alleged relationship of Candies and the defendant? Objection, hearsay. It's more like speculation. Um, did you know that, that, that I'll, I'm just gonna rephrase your question real quick. Um, were you aware of Candy and the defendant having any Kind of personal relationship? No. No. 
abnormal question. Okay, cross-examination. So, this is Lewin Hagen. Well, my bad. Did you, uh, when you went back to the scene on Monday, you did retrieve a few things, yes? Do you think it was possible that you might have accidentally taken something that could have been helpful to the case? No. No? Are you aware that, uh, Miss, uh, that Candy gave a photo to our defendant of herself? No. No? So our defendant claims that recently uh, you had been nosy of uh, Miss Candy's affairs and that she had had to stop talking to you about it. Do you believe that to be true? No. No? So do you, would you think it weird that she didn't tell you about any part of any sort of relationship with our defendant? Can you repeat that? Would you find it weird if she didn't tell you about any sort of development between her and our defendant? Yes. Objection than that one, but um, I'm going to sustain it. Just move on. All right. So the two towels you found were you're positive that they were your roommates? Yes. They were candies. Yes. All right. No further questions. Any redirection? Yeah. So, in your statements earlier, you said that Candy, you know that Candy gave a picture of herself to the defendant. Did you find that strange? that there was uh, that you were being too nosy but do you believe that you and Candy had a sound relationship and that there would be no reason for her to lie about her plans on Friday December 1st 2017 yes Objection. speculation I'm gonna overrule but it's close stick to what she would have personally had knowledge any recross? Uh, yes. So you said you found it weird that she gave her gave him a photo. I don't remember her giving a photo. So you think it might have also been weird that she wasn't telling you anything? Yes. No further questions. Any other direction? Um. <laughs> statement in front of the referencing so the witness knows what document you're So, um, on the sheet that says mock trial case back, <laughs> it says Candy's roommate was aware that Candy gave a picture of herself to the defendant and found it to be that to be strange. The defendant seemed to have a love interest in Candy, but the roommate was not aware of them actually dating. So, but would there, do you remember this conversation? Yes. Okay. Can you read? Okay. You may be seated. You got it. Um, it's 2-1.
too late to start a new witness. It's about 8.20. So um, with that, um, court is now in recess. We'll reconvene tomorrow morning. Uh, Bail, if you can bring the witnesses in. Is that not on? No, I'm just doing it back. Oh, it's too loud. Yeah. Okay. It is. Perfect. All right. Um, prosecution, are you ready with your first witness? And who do you call? I want to call for uh, the up there neighbor, Isaac Andrew, please. Okay. Stay standing. Raise your right hand. Face the clerk. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? If so, say I do. I do. Please stay and swear your name for the record. I have A-A-C. And last name. A-N-G-E-O. Thank you. All right, again, reminder to everybody to speak up so that we can hear everyone. Uh, can you tell jury your name again, please? Uh, I think when you live uh, upstairs apartment, and with whom? Uh, my husband. Where were you on December 1st, 2017? Uh, I was at home. And what were you doing on that time, on that day? Uh, I was just at home. Was there anything out of the ordinary on December 1st that you can recall? What did you find in, in the laundry? Uh, the reddish brown uh, towels. Where were you? Why were you so sure the clothes that you found belonged to the defendant? Because I've seen him uh, wear it on numerous occasions. Do you remember the, the clothes? Uh, jeans, t shirts, and socks. And there's no blood on them. Thank you. No more questions. Oh, stay. Cross examination. So when you found the clothes doing laundry, you're positive that there were no blood stains on our defendant's clothing? Yes. So you said you heard noise during the, uh, during that night? But how do you, uh, are you sure it wasn't just the washing machine? Because that's the only thing you confirmed to police that you said you could hear. Yeah, I assumed it was just one of the girls. All right. So despite hearing the washer, you're positive you heard no screams of the defendant. Mind you, this was a very, very violent crime. I didn't hear any screams. All right. Thank you, that's all. Any redirection? Standing. Raise your right hand, face the clerk. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? If so, say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Natalie Luba, N A T A L I E L U B A. Okay, Again, keep your voice up so that everyone can hear. Good morning. Good morning. Um, can you tell the jury your name again, please? Natalie Luba. How old are you? 65 years old. Um, where do you live? I live 10, or at 1016 Hamilton Street. Do 
you, do you live close to the victim? Yeah, I live right next door. So where were you the night of December 3rd? <coughs> I was home all night. Did you ever walk outside your apartment? No. What day did the police question you? December 5th. What did you found? What did you find out about the victim from the police? Um, they told me that she died. Were you close to the victim? No, we were casually acquainted. So, have you ever had a conversation with the victim before? We would only like greet each other when we were leaving and entering our apartments. Has she ever shown any interest in what you're doing, like in free time? Yeah, she found interest in like gardening or gardenry and carpentry gardening. What type of cars or, or trucks that the defendant owned? Uh, the defendant owned a, was a 2010 Ford pickup truck for 2005. You can just say pickup. It's okay. That's fine. <coughs> what about the victim vehicle? vehicle? They had a Chevy Equinox. Do you know? Did you notice any movement of those vehicle during the Friday evening? At yeah. 6:15. Yeah, I saw one or the Chevy Equinox leave when I was like around supper time. So what were you doing that time? I was like eating supper. Were you positive that the defendant's car didn't move at the time of 9 p.m.? Uh, yeah, I remember seeing it in the parking lot. Did you hear any call for help? <clears throat> no. Have you ever seen a defendant before? I saw her, saw him entering the apartment with Candy. So you see a defendant and a victim together at that? That night? Yes. Yeah, like around like 5 p.m. or so before supper. Okay. Um, what was the time for that? 5 p.m.? Yeah. No more questions. Okay. Cross examination. So, you've lived in the apartment complex for quite a while, right? Yeah. And from what I can tell that night, you were very, uh, let's say, attentive and saw a lot, heard a lot, right? Yeah. But despite living there for so long, the only time you could remember seeing our client saying you've never met him before was that night. Well, like, he recently moved to the apartment. Well, so you've never seen him before that, right? No. All right. <sighs> Were you actually able to identify him when you saw him walking into the building? No. All right. And despite hearing the pickup truck and the uh, other cars leave, you didn't hear the murder? Say that again? You heard both the cars leave, like her roommate and our defendant but you don't remember hearing the murder at all? Yeah. All right, no further questions. Any redirection? No. Okay, you may step down. Okay, prosecution, call your next witness. <coughs> um, we would like to call the pathologist, Nick Fenwick. Okay, can you get Nick, please? Uh, stay standing, raise your right hand, face the clerk. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? If so, say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Nick Fenwick, N-I-C-K-F-E-N-W-I-C-K. -E okay, you see that? Good morning. Can you tell the jury your name again, please? Nick Fenwick. And what is your occupation? I'm a pathologist. So what do you like, specialize in? Um, I determine the cause and effects of injuries of all types, such as like burns, wounds, abrasions. Who call you for your help with the murder of Candy Lewin Uh The police did. 
So after studying the apartment, what conclusion did you come to? Um, my conclusion was that due to the fact that there was four to five pints of blood smeared on the walls and seeping into the basement, I concluded that a body had been killed there at the apartment. So what is your expert opinion on what happened? Um, my expert opinion is that a body or a person was beaten with a hammer in the room where there was uh, two walls of two walls like covered in blood and then where the blood had like seeped into the floor so somebody had been killed right there in my expert opinion. Do you confident that the blood is the victim? Yeah, we we found um, type A negative blood on the hammer, the walls, the two towels in the laundry room, so they all match to the victim. What do you believe that happened in the victim apartment? Um, a murder. Thank you. No more questions. Okay, cross examination. So, uh, Mr. Fenwick, uh, you performed the examination of the scene on December 4th, correct? Yes. Um, you said that there's blood all over the walls. Yeah, virtually painted in it. Would you reasonably expect um, from somebody swinging a hammer at close range like that to get blood all over them from that kind of attack? Um, in my opinion, yes, they would get blood on them. And. Uh, you found no DNA of the defendant at the scene at all, correct? I only found blood. Uh, no further questions. Any redirection? Yeah. Um, in an earlier statement, you said that uh, DNA was found on the hammer from the defendant. Do you um, blood. That? Yeah, blood was found on the hammer. From the defendant? No, from the victim. Right, but in your statement, you, were all, you also said that there were fingerprints found on the hammer that belonged to the defendant. Yeah. Do you recall that? Yeah. Thank you. Any recross? So, our defendant was a handyman around the apartment. Would you say it would make sense for his fingerprints to be found on a hammer that he commonly used? I would say that would make sense. Yeah. Do you think it would be there before the crime as well? Um, the fingerprints would still be on oh, it yeah. even after the crime. Yeah. Oh, okay. No further questions. standing, raise your right hand, face the clerk. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? If so, say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Julia Hedden, J-U-L-I-A-H-E-D-D-E. You may be seated. Um, can you tell Julia your name again, please? My name is Julia Hedden. Um, where do you work? I work at the State Crime Bureau. <coughs> Who asked you to help with uh, with the victim's case. My boss summoned me for the investigation. So who did you meet at um, 10, 12 Hamden Street on December 4, 2017? I met the chief of police, Connor Haggard. What did you do at the victim's apartment? I helped in the investigation, mainly just looked at the pattern of the blood splattering around the house. Apartment. So what is your conclusion after your investigation? Looking at the way in which the blood was splattered on the furniture near, nearby and the walls showed that she was hit violently with the hammer, which was found by the body as well, 
And then there were dark brown stains on the hammer, which were concluded to be blood as well, which matched the type of blood from the victim. But also, mainly I just concurred, concluded that she had died from blood force trauma to the head and blood loss. There was so much blood that it was all over the floor and it started dripping into the basement even because of how much it was and no one could have survived that amount of blood loss. Did you obtain a search warrant for the defendant's apartment? Yes, I did. So what did you find at the apartment? She had a picture of the victim, Candy Lornhagen, sitting on his dresser. So again, in your opinion, what, helped, what happened to the victim? I believe that he, while they didn't have any romantic relationship, he became obsessed with her and decided that since she was starting to see other people, he would go and kill her. And then he had a hammer. Thank you. Cross examination. So, in your opinion, this crime was very severe. Uh, blood was found everywhere in the apartment the walls, the furniture, and it had. She had lost so much blood it seeped down through the floorboards, right? Yes. So, blood spray was everywhere. Yes. But no blood of the victim was found on our defendant's clothing. There was no DNA taken from any of the clothing found in any of the walls. Do you find that peculiar? Do you think there would have been blood on his shirt if he had been the attacker? I think he could have worn other clothes. And while after laundering clothes, a lot of the DNA is soiled because of the heat of the dryer and all of that. But, but there I was blood find. found on the towels. Blood, but not necessarily anyone else's, you know. All right. Uh, did you actually find any blood in our defendant's uh, apartment? I wasn't investigating the clothes found in his apartment, rather the items found. Well, it says that you found a search, you got a search warrant and you searched his apartment, and you search found warrant. no other evidence besides the picture. Search warrant to look at the major items, not to look for blood clothing. All right. So there were no blood stains in our apartment, and there was no DNA found. No blood stains in the defendant's apartment. All right. Thank you. Up, stay standing, raise your right hand, face the clerk. Do you solemnly swear from under the penalty of perjury that the testimony <coughs> you're about to give is the whole truth? If so, say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Sydney Scarpelli, S Y D N E Y S C A R P E L L I. Have a seat. Good morning. Can you tell your, the jury your name again, please? My name is Sydney Scarpelli. So what's your occupation? I'm a psychologist. What do you study? I study the way people think, feel, and behave. So how long have you been a psychologist? I've been studying psychology for 22 years, but I've only been practicing for 10. So where do you work? Clarkson Family Counseling. As you examine this case, do you believe that Jacob Lechner was capable of murdering Candy Red? I do. So what elements of this case is the most compelling to you? Um, it really stood out to me that the defendant had a picture of candy in his room, as well as the fact that he got jealous when she started talking to other boys when they had no relations or commitments. So what psychological disturbance, in your opinion, does Jacob let in some? It appears he has obsessive tendencies. He is very feels the need to control others. Um, maybe like some OCD, as well as anger management issues from a violent past. Thank you, no more questions. Cross-examination. So you just said our defendant had a criminal past, yes? No. Uh, so 
Let me see here. In your statement to the police, it says that you are a family counseling psychologist. So you work with families, yes? Yes. So that's how you met our client? Yes. So do you think that you have the same qualifications as that as a criminal psychologist who studies these type of crimes and the criminals who commit them? Yes. You're positive? Yes. All right. I'd like to point out to the jury that there is a very big difference between criminal psychology and family psychology. That's all. Any redirection? So in your statement, did you ever uh, explicitly say that Jacob Wetner was a criminal? No. Oh. So would you say that his case would technically be family related rather than criminal? Yes. That's all. Thank you. Are you cross? Okay. okay. You may step down. Prosecution, call your next witness. I want to call for the red barn bartender, David Shaw. David. Raise right hand, face the clerk. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? If so, say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Davin, D A V I M. Last name? Sure, that's the Thank you. Good morning. Can you tell the jury your name again, please? Uh, Davin, sure. So, what is your job? Uh, I'm a bartender. And where do you work? Uh, the Red Barn. Is it a popular one? In my local, in my town, yes. So what did the, what time did the defendant enter your bar? 10.30, around 10.30. The defendant claims that you have been there for at 9 p.m., which is approximately the time of the murder. Do you remember him at that time? I do not. Was he someone you would have remember seeing? I think so, yes. Um, what? Uh, just because of his behavior and how he was acting. Okay. Did you have any conversation or physical contact with the defendant? I did. So, what did he say in the conversation that you mentioned? Um, he said, uh, he asked me what happened to that young couple that was sitting over there around, when I was in here around 9 o'clock. So, what did you say in response? Well, I said, I do not remember seeing you in here around 9 o'clock, is what I told him. So, did you, so you did not care about him at all, but only in that occasion? Correct. What did he wear? Uh, he was wearing casual dress clothes. What was your opinion on, uh, or how did the defendant seem to be? Um, he, was a little, he seemed a little nervous and on edge, but it, it wasn't too much different from what I typically see on a normal night. Do you say that you didn't care about him at all, but you still see him uh, answer the bar? Ask and answer. Um, repeat your question, because I think the second part's new, but repeat your question. Um, so did, you didn't see, care about him at all, but you still see that, you still see that he came to your bar? Entering your bar at 9, 10, 30. Correct. Let's move on. What did he wear? Casual dress clothes. Uh, what was your opinions or how did the defendant seem to be according to you? Uh, he seemed nervous and on edge. So was the appearance odd? Um, I wasn't too odd from what I usually see on a normal night. Thank you. No further questions. Okay, cross-examination. So like you were asked earlier, the uh, tavern's pretty popular right now, right? So in your statement to the police, you said that, uh, that he was acting a bit peculiar, but um, no different than anyone else you've seen there? Correct. So you would say he's just a casual guy, right, when you saw him? Um, wearing I casual mean, not, clothes. yeah, he's wearing casual clothes, but uh, like I said, he was still kind of on edge. It wasn't like normal guy I would see outside the tavern just like the group that's in the that we, I usually see in the tavern. But he's a pretty common folk to be in there. 
to right. be in there, yes. All right, and the bar is really busy. So do you think it would be not that uncommon for you to mistake seeing an individual or mix them up with someone else? I think it's possible, but I usually remember that, I, I think I remember seeing him. All right, thank you, that's all. Any redirection? Yeah. You may step down. Prosecution, next witness. I wanted to call for the ex-girlfriend, Kelsey Standard Brand. You get Kelsey. Raise your right hand, face clerk. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? If so, say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Uh, Kelsey Sheldon Brand, K E L S E Y S C H A L D E N B R A N. Kelsey? Are you on a good evening? Yes. Yeah. Tell the jury your name again, please. Kelsey Sheldon Brand. So you are the ex-girlfriend of the defendant, right? Mm -hmm. How do you describe the defendant? He was very obsessive and stalkerish towards me. Objection. Speculation. She's not an expert. Um, can you be more specific to an action that he did? Give us like some action examples. I would see him watching me across the street and following me places. So how long have you known the defendant? I've known him for three years. How long were you romantically involved? A year and a half. So when were you when you were dating the defendant, did you experience him having any violent tendency? Yes. And what is it? Um, he would just get angry at me at certain things, and he would um, have a temper with me. Thank you. No more questions. Cross-examination. So, you guys both lived in the same area, correct? At the after the breakup? Yeah. So, you don't think it's couldn't be coincidental that you guys both saw each other in the same area where you guys both lived at a bar. It could be. Do you think you're a little biased because of the breakup? I mean, a heartbreak is hard, and it was a year and a half. Maybe. Objection. Argumentative. <laughs> Not argumentative. Um. <laughs> Say that question again. Well, do you feel like that you're saying all this because of the aftermath of the breakup and that it hurts? I don't think that I'm still hurt over the breakup. Any redirection? Could you describe more of the violent tendencies that you experienced um, um, after the breakup? Uh, he would just like get mad, yell, not necessarily like physically, but he would have like temper issues and yell at me. Did you ever feel in danger with him? Yes. Can you give me an occasion? Just during our fights when he would have a temper and I felt as though I was in danger and I needed to leave the situation. That's all, thank you. Any recross? So you said you didn't have any contact with him that he was stalking you after a relationship? Objection, leading. He can lead on cross, yeah. So you didn't actually talk to him after the breakup, right? No. All right, so how could you encounter any fights after the breakup? 
Oh, did she say after the breakup? Yeah, she did. That is my bad. That was during the it was during your relationship. relationship. Yeah. All right. No further. Okay. Any redirection? All right. You may step down. All right. Hey, prosecution. Next witness. I like to call for a victim for the lawyer. Uh, Jeff. Yeah. Will you grab Jeff? Standing, raise your right hand, face the clerk. You solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, as so say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Jeff Boggess, J E F F B O G G E S S. Okay, you may be seated. Good morning, sir. Uh, can you tell the jury your name again, please? Uh, my name is Jeff Boggess. And where do you work? I work at the old folks home. What is your job at the old folks home? I am uh, an administrator and a director. So you are the, uh, the victim boss, right? Yes. Um, what was the victim's job at the workplace? Um, she helped to take care of our elderly residents there. Did she do her job well? Yes. What did her supervisor tell you about her work? Uh, they said that she was cheerful and that she brought happiness into the lives of the residents there. Did you aware of her disappearance? Yes. Um, what was your reaction to the dis disappearance? Uh, we were surprised because um, it's not like her to show up to work and not call or leave a text or anything. So what did you, you do to find out about the candy absence? Uh, I called her mother. And what is the time and date of that call? It was on December 6th at about 10 o'clock in the morning. Did her mother give you any reason why she absent? No. Did you see the defendant at, at any time that afternoon on Friday, December 3rd? Yes. Did you know why he was there? No. Uh, so what did he wear? Um, he was wearing work clothes, presumably. They were kind of dirty and grimy. Thank you. No further questions. Cross-examination. So, Mr. Boggs, you said that his clothes were uh, dirty, right? So, um, it would make sense that he would uh, wash them, probably, like, between days. Like, if you were wearing clothes that dirty, would you wash them? I would wash my clothes if they were dirty. No further questions. Any redirection? Yeah. What was the impression that you got from the defendant when you saw him Friday afternoon? Um, I couldn't really get any immediate impression. Um, I don't know, like I said, his work clothes were kind of dirty. That's really all I could tell. Did he seem distressed? Uh, no. Recross? Yeah. So you said um, that our defendant came and picked Candy up for work? Uh, I don't know why he was there. Did he? Did she go in the car with him afterwards? Um, I can't recall. Well, she got a ride home from the apartment. Does that make sense to you? Say about the ass one. Something along those lines. That's maybe. All right, and it said when you saw the clothes, they looked soiled, but nothing like unusual about them, just that they were dirty from yeah. work. Yeah. All right, no further questions. Are you dry? No. All right, you may step down. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, prosecution. I wanted to call for the parents of the missing, the missing girl, um, Courtney. Okay, Courtney. Stay standing, raise your right hand, face the clerk. 
Do you solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of a perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? If so, say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Courtney Lunigan, C O U R T N E Y L E U E N H A G E N. Okay, you may have a seat. Good morning. Uh, can you tell the jury your name again, please? Courtney Lunigan. And what is your relationship between you and your daughter, and, and your victim, and the victim? She's my daughter. So how old is your daughter? She's 18. And where do you live, and with whom? Um, I live like 10 miles away from her, in Carson. Where did your daughter live, and with whom? About 10, 12 Hamilton Street, and with several friends in an apartment. Did Candy visit home often? <coughs> What? Did, did, Ken, <clears throat> did Candy visit home often? Yes. Was she intending to come home to visit on December 2nd, 2017? Yes. Why were you not too concerned that she didn't appear on that day? I thought something important at her job must have come up. So where does she work? Do you know? The old folks home. Were you aware of your daughter seeing someone recently? Um, Yes. She said that she was jealous of dating, that he was talking to other guys. So were you aware that the man that your daughter was seeing lived in the apartment next door? No. Is there anything notable that your daughter told you about the man she was seeing? Do you need to be a question? Yeah. Is there anything notable that your daughter told you about a man she was seeing? Yeah, he thought he was mad that she was seeing other guys. Did you try to call her? Yes. So did you call her employer to find out? The employer called me on the Monday morning. So when was the call I made at? At ten, around 10 a.m. Did you receive any response from the from the employer? From the reporter? Employer. The boss of the victim. Oh, yes. What did you do after that? Did you call the police? I had my husband call the police. What type of blood did she have? Type A negative. Is it the same as your type? Yes. Uh, did your daughter and you have a strong relationship with each other? Yes. So, how long has it been since the last time you saw her? Um, maybe a few weeks ago. Did you before have her murder? Yeah, before her murder. <laughs> have you given up your hope that you will see her again? Yes. Did you try? Um, Cross-examination. So you said that uh, the your daughter said that the defendant would seem jealous of her dating other guys. For did she ever mention any of these other guys to you? No. Do you know how often she was dating other guys, like switching between? No. Uh, no further questions. Any redirection? Yes. So just to clarify, in your statement, you said that your daughter said that he was jealous right. of her dating other guys. Right. And did any speculation <coughs> of his anger make you worry? Objection, speculation. Did, did Candy ever directly say something to you that made her fear the defendant? No. No questions. Any recross? Okay, you're all set.
prosecution, any other witnesses? Nope, I think you guys are good. Okay, uh, at this time, defense. Call your first witness. We would like to call defendant Jacob Lattner to this. Okay. Mr. Lattner, you kind of know how it works. Come over here, face the clerk, and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? If so, say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Uh, J A C O B L A T T E. I mean, I uh, E N E R. Mr. Latner, uh, can you remind the jury where you live? Uh, 1012 Hamilton Street. All right. And, uh, we know that the victim lived there, Candy Lewin Hagen. What was your relationship with the victim? Uh, I lived across from her, and um, after talking for a while, we became friends. All right. Do you remember when you last saw her that evening? Uh, yeah, I picked her up from work around 4.30, and we went back to the apartments. All right. Was she acting strange or seemed nervous in any way? No, she wasn't acting strange, but we, after talking for a little bit, she mentioned she had a date later that night with another man. That upset you? No, not in any way. It's just we were, we had been talking, and it was kind of disappointing, if anything. But there was really nothing to be mad about. Is it because you hadn't like developed anything serious that you just know each other well? Yeah, there was nothing serious between us. All right. So what happened when you went back to your apartment? Uh, I fell asleep. All right. Um. So. You were asleep for most of the time while you were at the apartment complex? Yes. And then it says you went to the bar around 9, 10 -ish. Yes. All right. How long did you stay at the tavern? Uh, I stayed about until 11, and then I went back to my apartment to grab a few things before I left. Where were you going after that? Uh, my parents' house, about 20 miles away. All right. So you're saying that after 9 o'clock, only at your return on 11, after the uh, time of murder, <coughs> that you went back to that yes. you're going? All right. So you're a mechanic, right? Yep. When you work, do your clothes get dirty? Yeah, they get stained pretty easily. All right. So when you're leaving from work, it's pretty difficult to have your clothes stained? Yeah. All right. So you are a mechanic, but it also was said that you do some, like, you know, general handiwork around the apartment complex. So do you have, like, a toolbox of tools? Yes. Uh, do you own a hammer? Yes. Uh, so, do you use it often? Yes. So, you're touching it with your bare hands a lot? Yes. All right. All right, no further questions. Cross-examination. Did you work on Friday, December 1st, 2017? Yes. Where were you on the night of December 1st, 2017 at approximately 9 p.m.? Uh, a bar. Do you usually do laundry on Friday nights at 10 p.m.? Yeah. How would you describe your relationship with Candy Lindhagen? Uh, just friends. Have you ever experienced issues with regards to anger or have had any violent outbursts in the past? Um, I've seen a counselor, but nothing like outburst or anything like that. What time did you pick Candy Lynn hanging up from her job at the old folks home? Around 4.30. What did Candy tell you that evening? Uh, that she had a date with another man. Did her plans upset you? No, not at all. Where did you go and what did you do after you dropped Candy off at home? Uh, I, after I dropped her off at home. After I dropped her off at home, mm -hmm. I fell asleep. Uh, why did you see a counselor? Uh, just because, I guess, anger issues. 
Do you have keys to Candy's apartment? Um, uh, no. Uh, would Candy let you into the apartment if her roommate Emery wasn't there? Yes. Would you say that she trusted you? Um, I guess. What kind of jobs did you do for Candy in her apartment? Uh, recently we hung her pictures up for her. Is there any reason you would leave the hammer at her apartment? Not on purpose, no. Did you do jobs around the house if Emery asked you to, also? Uh, yeah, for a friend. Why would Candy tell her mother you were jealous if of her dating other guys? Objection, hearsay. Yeah, that's, you're asking, yeah, that's speculation, hearsay. You're asking him to testify something he didn't directly hear. What made you think you and Candy were an exclusive couple? We weren't. Why do you think Candy wasn't upfront with her close family and friends about your supposed romantic relationship with her? We were just friends. Why did you lie to the police when you were first questioned? I was nervous and scared. Um, what did you drink when you were at the tavern? A beer. How long were you at the Red Barn for? Until 11. Why did you go to two different bars on the night of December 1st? Just to go out. I was on my way somewhere, so I stopped and grabbed some to eat the second time. What was your reaction when the police questioned you about the murder of Candy Loonhagen? I was pretty shocked and surprised. Did Candy ever tell you the name of the man she was supposedly seeing Friday, December 1st, 2017? No. Do you believe someone would try to frame you for the murder of Candy Loonhagen? Yes. Why do you think someone would frame you? Because um, that was the last person that was seen with her. Why can no one say they've seen you on the night of December 1st, 2017, between 7 p.m. and 10.30 p.m.? Sorry, can you repeat that? Um, why can no one say they've seen you on the night of December 1st, 2017, between 7 p.m. and 10.30 p.m.? Um, why can no one... Uh, objection, hearsay. He wouldn't know why other people saw it. I agree. Yeah, sustained. How would your friends and family describe you? Um, kind. Would you say your ex-girlfriend Kelsey has ever been afraid of you or your actions? No. Um, would you say that your anger issues can make you violent? Um, not necessarily. Like, Objection, violent, speculation. No. He's not a psychologist. He wouldn't know. I would rephrase that question. Have you ever had any violent incidences as a result of your anger? No. Okay. And your father says you hunt. How often do you hunt? As often as I can. That's awesome. Any recross? So that night when you were giving her a ride home, you said that she told you she was going on another date with someone else. Yes. So you knew that um, she dated multiple men, yes? Yes. Do you find that odd? Uh, I guess if it was multiple men. All right. Um, so when you were questioned by the police, you apologized for the lie, stating that you were nervous and that you told them that you were positive that the other man who that she claimed she was going on a date with was the murderer and framed you, yes? Yes. All right. So where you at? When you were at the Red Bar Tavern, it was pretty busy, right? Yeah. All right. And you had never seen the towels that had the blood of the defendant on? Absolutely not. All right. Were you in her apartment that night? No further questions. Any redirection? Um, did Candy ever tell you about her roommate being nosy? Yes. yes. In your initial uh, question with the police, if Candy was a close friend of yours, why would you lie to the police? Sorry, can you say that again? You said that you were a close friend of Candy's? Yeah. Why would you? initially lied to the police when they were, when they questioned you? I was just scared of what was going on. You wouldn't want to help her? I wouldn't want to help her. Objection, badgering. Um, not badgering, but it might be more speculative. Sustained, any other questions? 
Why did you have a picture of Candy? She gave it to me. Did she say why? No. Make it quick. Yeah. So Candy gave you the photo, yes? Yes. All right. No further questions. Okay. All right, we're going to recess. I mean, you may be dismissed. We just have a couple. It'll be fast tomorrow. We have a couple witnesses. Can you call your next witness? Do you solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? If so, say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Sean, S E A N, Latner, L A T T N E R. You may be seated and just keep your voice up. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Latner, uh, what time did our defendant show up at your house at? Uh, 1 a.m. Uh, for what reason? To stay the night. Um, how would you describe Sean? He's not a violent tempered person and he's never been in trouble with the law. Never? No. Alright. How do his friends in like the town he grew up in know him? Uh, everyone likes him and he's well liked. Alright. Do you think that Sean could have committed this crime? No. No? Alright. No further questions. Cross examination? Where do you live? Where do you live? Uh, we live on a farm, 20 miles from where he worked. Would you say it would be strange that he showed up at your house at 1 a.m.? I think it'd be a little strange, yeah. What did you think about him going to counseling for anger management? Um, I've never seen him as an angry person, so it was kind of shocking. Did he ever mention Candy Lonehagen to you? Maybe once or twice. Did you think their relationship was strange? No. Are you sure your son has never shown any violent tendencies? Not to me, no. I've never seen him as a violent person since I've known him. No further questions. Any redirection? So, you say it was kind of odd for him to show up late that night? Yeah, without being like unannounced or whatever. Um, I thought he had told you previously that he was coming. Um, no, he just showed up and he was going to spend, spend the night, which is not a big deal. Alright, so that, that can happen from time to time. He shows yeah, up. It's happened to me more. Um, stays home for the weekend? Yeah. Alright, no further questions. Any recross? Are you aware if your son drinks often? No. So you would say it would be strange for him to go to two different bars in one night? I mean, yeah, he is 20. Objection, hearsay. In your opinion, would it be strange for him to go to two bars in one night? Yes. No further questions? It's more speculation, but it's okay. All right. You may step down. Okay, defense, call your next witness. Uh, Kennedy, I think. Is it Kennedy next? Uh, I don't have the list. Okay. Oh. Kennedy. Yeah, it's Kennedy. Okay. Uh, I'd like to call Kennedy Tillman. Okay, could you get Kennedy, please? Stay standing, raise your right hand, face the clerk. You solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth. If so, say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Uh, Kennedy Tillman, K E N N E D Y T I L O M A N. You may be seated. Great. So, Ms. Tillman, how do you know the defendant? Uh, he's my friend. We've been friends for 10 years. 10 years, that's a long time. So would you say you know him quite well? Yes. 
Alright. Would you describe him as a violent or an angry person? I would, and I would trust him with my children. Alright. So, do you think that he could have committed this crime? I don't think so. Alright. Has he ever had any, like, problems with females, like his ex-girlfriend? How would you say his character is? I would say he's very kind and a sensitive person, and he's got a sensitive personality. Do you think it's strange that he went to counseling? I think everyone should be able to go to counseling, talk their problems out. All right, that's all. Cross examination. Would you say that Jacob enjoyed his work? I would say so. Did he make his work a hobby as well? Yes. If there was one um, item of Jacob's that stuck out to you, what would it be? Objection irrelevant. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let her proceed, but we'll see where the follow up is, and if she stays on a straight path, then I'll sustain it. But you can answer the question. I would say his drill. His drill. Is there a reason why a drill? Uh, he. <coughs> He let me borrow it a lot, hang things up, and work around the house. Did he do home projects often? Yes. Did he often help other people with their own projects? Yes. Did he help you with your own projects? Yes. Has he ever mentioned Candy to you? Uh, yeah. Did he talk about her often? Not too often, but once in a while I hear her name. You mentioned earlier that uh, everyone should be able to go to counseling. But do you think it would be strange for him to go to anger management counseling if no one's ever experienced him being violent or having anger issues? Objection, speculation. You can testify that anything that you've personally seen. So have you ever personally seen any anger or violence from him? No. No further questions? Um, any recross, or sorry, redirection? So you said he helped you with projects around the house? Yes. He's just a general handyman? Yep. What do you think that says about his person? I would say helpful and considerate. Not violent and angry? No. All right. No further questions. Any recross? No. You may step down. Defense, call your next witness. Stay standing. Raise your right hand. Face the clerk. You solemnly swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth. Or so say I do. I do. Please say and spell your name for the record. Jennifer Starnes. J E N N I F E R S T A R N E S. Okay. You may have a seat. And again, keep your voice up, please. Okay. Um, you work with the defendant, correct? Yes. Uh, where do you work? I work at the Clarkson Auto Body Garage. How long have you been working with Jacob? Uh, I've worked with him for about six months. After working with, with him for about six months, uh, how would you judge his character and personal image? Um, Jacob is a really good worker. He is very skilled and he's also very friendly. He does great communicating with our clients and with the other employees. On the, after, on the afternoon of December 1st, do you remember the last time you saw the defendant? Yeah, um, I saw him last at 4 o'clock. That's when our garage closes. So he checked out with me at 4, and then, yeah. Would you say Jacob was a respectable person? Did he ever seem violent or troublesome? No, he never seemed violent at all. No further questions. Okay, cross-examination. Would you be concerned with someone like Jacob going to counseling for anger management, a problem he seemed to not have? Um, I couldn't really imagine him 
going to anger management, but if he did, that never affected his work. So. Did he ever mention candy to you? No. <laughs> Any redirection? Nope. No? Okay, you may step down. Any further witnesses? I believe no. no. Okay, defense press. Um, so at this um, time, we're going to hear closing argument, and we will um, begin with prosecution. This terrible murder has shocked all of us and the family of the victim. It was so brutal, so violent, and so sudden that we cannot imagine what the Lunahagans have gone through and are continuing to go through at this time. It's difficult to imagine the parents of the victim who cared for her the most of her life, who misses her greatly and will never see their beloved daughter's face again. Who could take someone away from their family in such a brutal matter? Who could do such a thing? These questions can only be answered in this courtroom. It's fallen to the members of the jury to answer these questions. Based on evidence, uh, based on what you've heard, and the answer is clear, Jacob Lattner is guilty. Jacob Lattner planned and executed the violent crime attack on Candy Loonhagen. He alone is responsible for this terrible crime. The duty of, for all of us today is to bring justice to this family. A girl's bright future has been taken and squandered by Jacob Lattner. The defense lawyers will soon stand before you, in closing, try to convince you one last time that Jacob Lattner did not commit this heinous crime. Now when there is no more evidence left to give, we can only hope that the jury will make a fair decision that will ensure Jacob Lattner is held accountable for what he did. We are here to seek justice for Candy Loonhagen and her family. Thank you. Defense. Dear jury, during this case, we tried to show you that Jacob Latner is innocent in this case. We did this in multiple ways. We showed you that um, some of the, te the testimonies were unreliable, um, that um, the evidence was mostly circumstantial, and that everyone around him believed him to be innocent because he would never do this in real life. Jacob Latner was a very respectable person who had minimal enemies. He respected the people he worked with and he tried to be helpful as much as he could to the people he respected. I'm gonna ask you to analyze everything that you heard and if you have any doubts in your head that Jacob Latner could have done this, I'm gonna have to ask you to uh, give Jacob Latner the not guilty on this one. Thank you. Okay. Prosecution, you are allowed a rebuttal if you choose, but you don't have to do it. Not at this time? Okay. All right, with that jury, I'm gonna give you some jury instructions and then my clerk will take you um, in the back hall for deliberation, okay? Um, so when you go to the jury room, um, you first need to choose a four-person. That four-person should see to it that your discussions are carried on in a business-like way and that everyone has a fair chance to be heard. A verdict in a criminal case must be unanimous, so all 14 of you need to agree. Um, in order to return a verdict, it's necessary that you each agree on that verdict. In the jury room, you will discuss the case amongst yourselves, but ultimately, each of you will have to make up your own mind. Any verdict must represent the individual considered judgment of each juror. It is your duty as jurors to talk to each other and make every reasonable effort to reach an agreement. Express your opinions and the reasons for them, but keep an open mind as you listen to your fellow jurors. Rethink your opinions and do not hesitate to change your mind if you decide you're wrong. Try your best to work out your differences. However, although you should try to reach an agreement, None of you should give up your honest opinion about the case just because the other jurors disagree with you or just for the sake of reaching a verdict. In the end, the vote, your vote must be your own and you must vote, must vote honestly and in good conscience. Um, so in this case, we have what's called an open murder charge. The defendant, Jacob Latner, has been charged with first degree murder, which I'll read the elements for that in just a moment. However, if you find that the prosecution has not reached the burden 
of proof in first degree murder, you may um, also consider two lesser charges of second degree murder or voluntary manslaughter. Um, I'm gonna read the elements for first degree. However, I will include um, the elements for what makes up second degree and manslaughter in your jury packet, okay? So again, in this case, there are several different crimes that you may consider. When you discuss the case, you have to consider the crime of first degree premeditated murder first. Um, if you all agree that the defendant's guilty of that crime, you can stop deliberations and return your verdict. If you believe that the defendant is not guilty of first degree murder, or if you can't agree about that crime, you should consider the less serious crimes of second degree murder and voluntary manslaughter. Um, if you need to communicate with me while you're in the jury room, please have your first person write a note and give it to the bailiff. She'll be right on the other side of the door. You can just knock. Um, it's not proper for you to talk directly with the judge, lawyers, court officers, or other people. Um, as you discuss the case, you must not let anyone, even me, know your voting stands. Therefore, you, until you reach a, a unanimous verdict, do not reveal this to anyone outside the jury room. So let me read the elements for first degree murder, and I'll send these back with you so you have them. Um, so the defendant has been charged with the crime of first degree premeditated murder. To prove this charge, the prosecution must prove each of the following elements beyond a reasonable doubt. So all elements have to be present. If one element you feel is missing, then you cannot find the defendant guilty of first degree. Uh, first, that the defendant caused the death of Candy, and that Candy died as a result of blood force trauma. Second, that the defendant had intent to kill Candy. Third, that this intent to kill was premeditated, as in thought out beforehand. Fourth, the killing was deliberate, which means that the defendant considered the pros and cons of the killing and thought about and chose his actions before he did it. There must have been real and substantial reflection for long enough to give a reasonable person a chance to think twice about intent. So premeditation doesn't have to be like a month beforehand. It can be right before, but they have to have time to have thought about it. The law does not say how much time is needed. It's for you to decide if enough time passed under the circumstances of this case. The killing cannot be the result of a sudden impulse without thought or reflection. And fifth, that the killing was not justified, excused, or done under circumstances that reduce it to a lesser crime. So when you go back to the room, pick, choose your foreperson, here's a verdict form. Uh, the foreperson can fill this out as soon as you have reached a decision, okay? And including the elements for first degree, second degree, and manslaughter to the back of it. Um, we are on a time schedule here, but you have you still have a pretty good time to, amount of time to deliberate. Um, so with that, I'm going to give you a pen. Give this to my clerk. She'll take you to the back hallway. Um, just knock if you, once you reach your verdict. Okay. Um, with that all rise for the jury. Um, yeah, take it off. <laughs>